What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today is the second day of the 2019 NFL Draft. The Jaguars have three picks today, two in the third round and one in the second round. And today what we are going to be doing is diving into 10 players that it could possibly be in the second and the third round. We got five in the second, we got five in the third, and hopefully the Jags are able to snag two of these third round picks. So ladies and gentlemen, this is 10 players that the Jaguars could select in the second and third round of today's day two of the NFL Draft. Second round, offensive tackle, Cody Ford. Now Cody Ford fell into the second round to my surprise. I'm not as, I'm as surprised as an aspect of how high J1 Taylor was rated in the draft, and I was surprised he fell to the second round, but talent-wise, I'm not 100% surprised he did, but Cody Ford is a guy that I'm also, I am just shocked he made it into the second round, and some of these other offensive tackles went before him, and he's going to be looking the Jags right in the face, but he is going to be a high commodity to start the second round, so maybe one of the other teams picking before us will snag up Cody Ford, because like I said, he is a solid pickup in the second round. I mean, Arizona obviously needs offensive line help. They could be looking at Cody Ford. They could also be looking at uh, J1 Taylor as well. So Cody Ford is a guy I wouldn't mind seeing the Jags snag up in the second round to help uh, solidify some depth on the offensive line and maybe even draft a future starter in Cody Ford to uh, take over Jeremy Parnell at the right tackle position. And though it wouldn't be the most exciting pick, I think that it would make a lot of sense and it would help solidify the offensive line, which is something that we thought the Jags were going to do in the first round. Third round, safety, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Now, there were a decent amount of safeties taken in the first round of the NFL draft, and the defensive backs are some of the more, uh, how do I say, like, under appreciated uh, positions in this year's draft class. Not a lot of people are trying to be getting uh, safeties because not a lot of them, in their opinion, are worth it in the first round at least. But there were two, three safeties taken in the first round. So I think some of these other later safeties are going to be some hidden gems. And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, I think, is one of those guys as well. I had him graded as a first-round talent, but as he keeps on slipping down the board, and, you know, safety is not a big need for a lot of NFL teams. So he should be available in the third round and if he is I think the Jags should take an opportunity on him you know give Jared Wilson some competition be able to come in uh day one and try to compete for a starting job and you know it could be back-to-back -back years we drafted third round safeties that make a big big impact uh for the Jaguars in the regular season of course Ronnie Harrison came in for relief of Barry Church who ended up getting benched and Ronnie Harrison finished the season so another third round safety holding it down back there with Ronnie Harrison would be cool and I like Chauncey Gardner Johnson I think he has a tremendous upside and a high ceiling he does have a pretty low floor though so you know he's not a finished product and he might not really he might not start on the field Jared Wilson may still earn that position but give Chauncey Gardner Johnson a chance and let him compete for that safety position second round Irv Smith Jr. tight end the Jaguars are still looking for a tight end, and I think they need to address it today on day two, whether that be in the second round or the third round. Obviously, the two big guys, Noah Faint and TJ Hawkinson, are off the board, but there are still some decent tight ends still available. Two guys that I really like are Dawson Knox and Irv Smith Jr. Irv Smith Jr. isn't necessarily as physical of a tight end that we really need in Jacksonville. I think the Jags need a guy that can block and could be dominant and you know could really do it all and I think TJ Hawkinson and maybe Dawson Knox you know those are like the only two guys that I think have that dirty blocking caliber in them but if we are looking for an athletic guy that could be Nick Foles' security blanket and could make big plays down the field I think Irv Smith Jr. is a selection here and I would not be mad with that at all the kid is a playmaker he's just not as physical as other tight ends in this year's draft but the Jags really truly do need a playmaker and that's what Irv Smith Jr. is so I would not be objected to taking Irv Smith Jr. again in the second round. Third round tight end 
Dawson Knox. So another tight end that I barely touched on just there. Dawson Knox, he's a little bit more physical, and he's not really the pass catcher that Irv Smith Jr. is. And I think that if we wait until the third round to get a tight end, I think our options are going to be very, very slim, and Dawson Knox will probably be the best tight end available in the third round. So if the Jags do want to draft their tight end and they haven't yet, Dawson Knox will be an okay selection in the third round. You know, I had him mocked to the Jags a couple of times. Uh, when I had us wait to get a tight end and the Jags might be in that situation in real life where they do wait to get their next tight end and Dawson Knox will be available in the third round and uh, Irv Smith Jr. probably will not be you know there's still some teams that do need some tight ends and Irv Smith Jr. is like the last real big tight end that teams can select to make a big impact so you know Irv Smith will be off the board if the Jaguars do not take him so he's not going to be an option in the third round so tight end is still a big deal for the Jags to upgrade so Dawson Knox will be the available tight end in the third round though I don't think he's going to make as big of an impact as Irv Smith Jr. would I think that he could still come in produce do things that we ask him to but he's going to be a little bit more of a project than an Irv Smith Jr. so you know snagging him up in the third round would not be the end of the world but maybe Irv Smith Jr. in the second round will be the smartest pick for the Jags. Second round, wide receiver, DK Metcalf. Now, I was not about the Jags selecting DK Metcalf 7th overall, but now that he has fallen to the second round of the draft, I'm all about taking a gamble on DK Metcalf. Uh, He's a true 50-50 ball wide receiver, and like we all know, his route running is not spectacular, but the Jags do kind of need a big physical threat. All of our wide receivers are tiny little slot guys that are just really fast, so adding DK Metcalf I think would make a lot of sense. And I think in this situation, in this draft right now, I think DK Metcalf is the most likely, and hear me out on that one. So, like I said, the Jags are filled with a bunch of wide receivers that are small body speed guys. Uh, Nick Foles always had at least one big, uh, big handed target wide receiver for 50 50 balls, Alshon Jeffrey in Philadelphia, for example. And DK Metcalf could be that guy for Nick Foles. We don't need this guy to be a finished product right off the bat. We don't need him to really have that spectacular rack running because we have a really good wide receiver coach in Keenan McCardell. You know, a guy that will teach DK Metcalf the ropes, show it to him. And, you know, getting him in the second round is a huge, huge steal. And getting Josh Allen and DK Metcalf, that's two first round grades, you know, uh, at least in my opinion. So getting Nick Foles, a true 50 50 guy, I think is going to be our biggest priority. And I I think snagging up DK Metcalf or another wide receiver we're going to be talking about here in a little bit should be the main priority for the Jags if Irv Smith Jr. is off the board. I still think Irv Smith Jr. is the main priority at the tight end position, at least for the Jags. For me personally, I would like to snag up DK Metcalf again for the simple fact that Nick Foles truly needs like a 50-50 guy. So uh, <clears throat> that is who I think the selection should be at six here in the second round but you know DK obviously he's going to be a hot commodity in the second round so teams are probably going to be trying to trade up and you know teams ahead of us are going to be trying to snag DK Metcalf he might not make it all the way to six you got the Giants as well who the Giants I think are dark horses to land DK Metcalf and maybe Giants fans could finally be happy but uh I actually think if DK goes to the Giants that's probably a really bad spot for him. Uh, I don't think he would succeed in New York. I think Jacksonville would be a good place for him. I think he has potential to succeed here. And I think that he should be the selection. In my opinion, I think he should be the selection in the second round. Third round, offensive lineman, Greg Little. Now, Greg Little is another guy that I had graded as a first-round talent. I don't really know what his issue is and why he didn't get selected either. I mean, like, that tightest guy that the Texans selected from Alabama State, dude, that was crazy. You know, I would even put Greg Little above him in my, uh, at least my big board, you know. But Greg Little is looking like a guy that might be available in the third round. And, you know, if the Jags were able to snag freaking Irv Smith, DK Metcalf, or whatever in the second round, and then they came around and they got uh, Greg Little. Holy moly, would this be one hell of a draft for the Jags and Dave Caldwell maybe saved his job, and maybe this could be a really good haul like the 2016 season, because that's what it would look like if we got like DK, Irv Smith in the second round, and then snagged up Greg Little. I think this might be reaching just a little bit. I think Greg Little might go in the second round or early third round, and hopefully 
hopefully if he goes early third round, he goes to the Jaguars and we already selected a big a big playmaker in the second round because I think that's what the second round should be used for, at least in my opinion. I think that it should be used to get a playmaker and then the third round you can solidify your offensive line or if you haven't already, get your tight end, you know. <clears throat> but I don't – I man, I think offensive uh, – if we don't get – an offensive lineman in the second, which I think the second should be used to get a playmaker, in my opinion. The third almost has to be a offensive lineman because we need to solidify that offensive line and we need to solidify depth. Second round, AJ Brown. Now, I like I said, I think the second round should be used to get a playmaker, and that's what AJ Brown is. And in my opinion, he's the best wide receiver in this year's draft class. So if the Jags are able to get him. I will be over the moon, excited, happy. And I think that they have a really good chance at landing him because you got two other wide receivers who, you know, on other people's big boards seem to be higher because, you know, DK with his 50 50 ability and his just raw strength. And then you got Hakeem Butler, who's another kind of 50 50 guy who has, you know, the opportunity to fly down the field and, you know, make those catches. But AJ Brown is the best all around wide receiver, not only available, but in this year's draft, in my opinion. I would take. I take A.J. Brown 10 times out of 10 over D.K. Metcalf, and I take him 10 times out of 10 over Hakeem Butler as well. I think this kid has everything he needs to be a successful wide receiver. I think he has the 50-50 potential. I think he has the route running potential. Everything you need in a wide receiver, A.J. Brown has it. And that's why the Jags need to, and I repeat, need to take A.J. Brown if he is still available in the second round because they will regret it if they don't. They need a playmaker in the second round and make it be A.J. Brown. Third round, Andy Isabella, wide receiver. Now, if we don't go playmaker at the wide receiver position, get a guy like Irv Smith Jr., or maybe select an offensive lineman, Andy Isabella in the third round will be a huge get at the wide receiver position. One of the most underrated receivers in this year's draft. The kid can fly. He is so, so fast. And, you know, he'd be he'd get added to a wide receiver group that kind of already has a lot of Andy Isabellas, but if we use that to our advantage with all the speed that we'll have, on the outside where we can't have like these corners can't catch up that would be cool and you know like I said we get offensive linemen like Cody Ford you know in the first in the second round then taking Andy Isabella in the third round with one of our picks I don't think would be the worst case scenario I don't think he's going to be making as big of an impact as a guy like uh, DK Metcalf or a guy like AJ Brown but a impact nonetheless. I still think he'll be a big money player, and I think he'll have an opportunity to not only make the roster, but see the field quite a bit. And uh, Andy Isabella would be a decent third-round selection for the Jags. Second round, Jaywan Taylor. Jaywan Taylor was number one on my uh, first-round selections, mostly because I thought that's the avenue the Jags were going to go, but thank God they didn't. But now in the second round, I'm actually... Kind of hoping a little bit the Jags snag up Jawan Taylor. Though he's not a finished product, like we said in the first round pick. Uh, first round video, I should say. I think that getting him in the second round with his talent level is definitely, definitely fair. I still think he's graded out as a first round player. I just don't think he was graded out as like a top 10 pick first round player. That's why I was just shocked that he kept on falling and falling. So, you know, obviously these NFL GMs know something that we don't know. But snagging Jaywan Taylor in the second round would be a good get for the Jags. Again, this guy could be the starting right tackle for the Jags next season. He could walk in day one and do that. Uh, or, you know, Will Richardson will start and we'll see where that kind of goes from there but Jaywan Taylor's a guy that again could start week one of the season and just dominate and you know we would be like okay you know this is fine because we didn't draft you in the first round so I guess you know it could have been worse but you know maybe he'll go on and prove us wrong we'll be like man we should have snagged you in the first round but you know it's a good thing we got you in the second round because you and Josh Allen man that's one hell of a haul and you know like I said in my uh going over the Josh Allen pick this draft really reminds me of the 2000 16 NFL draft mostly because you know we thought we were going to land Jaywan Taylor 
but we ended up getting Josh Allen, which is way better. In 2016, we thought we were going to get Miles Jack, right? But we got Jalen Ramsey, and then we ended up selecting Miles Jack in the second round. So in this year, we ended up getting Josh Allen, who we didn't think we were going to get, and then we could end up getting Jaywan Taylor in the second round, which would be pretty dope. I think that that would be a good spot for Jaywan Taylor. He wouldn't have to go very far, obviously. And I think that, again, he has the potential to start day one, and he has the potential to be a solid player, just needs a little work, and I wouldn't be mad if the Jags took a shot on him with their first pick in the second round. Third round, Deontay Thompson. Deontay Thompson, another safety to add on the list and a guy that can compete with Jared Wilson to really get some playing time. And this guy, you know, he's a he's low on a lot of people's draft boards, but, you know, I took some time to look at tape on him, some film on him. This guy is a very, very solid safety, and I think he also has the opportunity to come in and start day one. So snagging up Thompson in one of our third round picks, and if we snag like a Dawson Knox, a Greg Little, or an Andy Isabella as well, that would just be completely insane and be a really really good draft haul for the Jaguars in 2019. This kid has speed. This guy has, you know, a lot of zone ability. He has a good tackling ability. He really has it all at the safety position. He's just a little, little bit undersized, but that's okay. And I think that bringing him in to compete with Jared Wilson and to be able to be a starting safety for us, I think this will be a huge get in the third round. And again, another third round safety to compete and start off with Ronnie Harrison, who again was another third round safety. And that was me telling you 10 players the Jaguars should select on day two of the NFL draft. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixel. You can also hop over to Teespring, get yourself some Troop Talks merchandise. And also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Dems are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.